crying in baseball. I mean, one of the best lines in films all time, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Tom Hanks delivering Everyone that line. It, right? A league of their own. Yeah. Yes, what a good flick that was. Looking forward to that story. <laughs> hey, so glad you're with us in our 6 a.m. hour. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Irampour. You know, it's going to be baseball weather yeah. for the next few days at least. Let's check in with Evan about that. <laughs> it's a beautiful start to the morning already. Once we start to see more of that sunlight really come through, which is going to take place over the next 30 minutes or so, it'll be gorgeous. The thing is, though, to start off the morning, two things. Number one, it is cooler out there significantly 10 15 degrees cooler than just 24 hours ago. Number two, there are some areas of fog. So two things to keep in mind as we start off the day. But by the afternoon, look at the changes that we have on hand. A lot of sunshine across the board. Temperatures in the afternoon in the low 70s across the coastline, mid 70s inland. It'll be gorgeous out there as a ridge of high pressure builds a little bit breezy at times. And we'll talk about that next Santa Ana wind event that's going to be coming our way in just a bit. As far as traffic goes, just one thing to mention, want to take you to the La Mesa area where we do have the number one lane blocked due to a stalled vehicle on the 94 westbound at the Bancroft Drive exit. We'll keep you up to date with traffic. Again, cbsa.com slash traffic is a great place to find it. California lawmakers are working on solutions as hospitals and ambulances continue to be overwhelmed with the latest COVID surge. At least one local hospital declared an internal disaster earlier this week because of the flood of patients. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live in Chula Vista now with more on this. Dana Marie. And good morning, Eric. Well, I'm here at Sharp Tula Vista where, yes, they did declare an internal disaster because 70 patients were overwhelming their emergency room. There was not one bed open in their emergency department. Now, they were able to end this emergency declaration because they moved patients into other departments. They do say they're out of the woods, but COVID patients continue to flood the halls. Now, this does come right as EMS workers from around the state of California come to talk to lawmakers this week about extreme extremely long wait times from their ambulances and when they arrive to hospitals when patients actually get a bed in that hospital. Some are even saying this is the most significant medical crisis in the state where reports are surfacing about how ambulances are waiting for as long as eight hours for patients to get a hospital bed, which is very, very dangerous. Now on Wednesday, the California State Assembly Committee on Emergency Management held an oversight hearing about how this problem has been decades in the making, but has only recently been exacerbated by staffing shortages and high demands because of the latest COVID-19 surge. If Assembly member Freddie Rodriguez spoke about this at the meeting. People are waiting for ambulances. People are waiting for treatment at hospitals, and it shouldn't be that way, especially this day and age. I know there's a pandemic, but we need to elevate ourselves. What do we do differently so that way we can make sure that at the end of the day, people get quality care and service uh, when you're going to a hospital? Well, Assemblyman Rodriguez was speaking about what we can do differently. So some uh, solutions were proposed, like fining hospitals if ambulances were waiting more than 20 minutes. So they say that new legislation would really make a difference as these EMS rules and, and laws were established over 40 years ago. And of course, we're nowhere near where we were 40 years ago and not in a pandemic. So back live here in Chula Vista, we still know that internal disaster was declared um, resolved, but COVID patients are still over overwhelming their emergency department. I'm Dana Marie McNichol live in Chula Vista for CBS 8. So let's give you a closer look now at the situation here in San Diego. Officials are reporting just over 9,000 new cases. Nearly one in three tests came back positive over this past week. 39 more hospitalizations were reported, pushing that total above 1,300 people now. That's nearly quadruple where we were one month ago. Four more people were in, admitted to intensive care units, just under 200 people now in the ICU, and five more deaths were reported. The county is expanding COVID testing sites to help with increased demand. The newest one now at the Palomar YMCA, this is in Escondido. They can provide up to 800 tests a day. They'll be open Monday through Friday. Appointments will be required there. For the latest information on any stories related to the COVID pandemic, you can text the word COVID to the number on your screen. It's 858-571-8888. We'll send back a link directly to your phone. Well, a plan to add fencing along the train tracks in Del Mar is up for a vote here today. The North County Transit District says the goal is to reduce deaths and injuries. Yeah, but others don't want to restrict access to the beaches. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live in Del Mar to explain the controversy behind this, what's going to be happening. Good morning, Chris. 
Good morning, and that's really the fear that you're hearing from residents that are objecting to this. They feel like any type of fencing that goes along these tracks at six feet tall will sort of keep people from getting down to the beach. That's also a fear from the Coastal Commission as well, too. But let's get to the root of this issue. When you drive down Delmar Heights Road and into this coastal town, you can't help but miss these signs. It almost looks like election season down here. A lot of signs proclaiming don't fence us out. However, the North County Transit District wants to move forward to install a six foot fence on both sides of the train tracks out here. Now, many of you not in Delmar may be wondering why. Why is this even an issue? Well, it's about safety. People use those tracks. They cross them to take a direct route to the beach, kind of where we are right now. 11th Street. This will be something where people will hop this barrier after parking down the road and then take this down to a direct line to go surfing. Now, people have been doing this for a long time. It is illegal, though, and four people have died crossing the track since 2016. Remember, the coaster runs through here. The residents, meanwhile, believe that the fencing will hurt tourism and the town as a whole. Now, we spoke with John Stahl. He heads up the group organized to stop this fence. The group says that they would agree to a short section of fence where most of the deaths have occurred, but there are other solutions that would make the track safe. Better signage, better flashing lights, slow the trains down. Do the trains need to go through here at 55 miles an hour? And the Coastal Commission has weighed in, right? And they did write a letter that said, quote, fencing projects collectively have the potential to result in significant adverse impacts to coastal access and recreation. The commission actually wants both fencing and cliff stabilization studied together to try to find a comprehensive solution to find something that works for everybody on all these fronts. Again, though, this will be voted on later today. Eric and Eric Netta. Chris, thanks for that. After more than half a century in law enforcement, San Diego Sheriff Bill Gore is retiring next month. Sheriff Gore began his career in 1970 with the FBI. He worked there for more than three decades before moving to the San Diego County District Attorney's Office. He was later appointed sheriff in 2009. The County Board of Supervisors will appoint an interim sheriff in March. President Biden says he's disappointed after Senate Republicans blocked action on the Democrats' voting rights bill through a filibuster. Senate Democrats then put forward a vote to change the filibuster rules, but that all attempt also failed. The president says the Senate, quote, failed to stand up for our democracy. And today marks one year since President Biden took office. He marked the occasion with a two-hour press conference and vowed to continue fighting the pandemic. Some people may call what's happening now the new normal. I call it a job not yet finished. It will get better. The president acknowledged some of his successes, but with an approval rating that has fallen 17 points since taking office, the president promised to keep working on his agenda. All right, let's turn now to Evan, where numbers are going to be going upwards, it seems. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting that we're starting off the morning with temperatures like 10, 15 degrees cooler than 24 hours ago. But by the time we get to the afternoon, we're going to be 10, 15 degrees warmer than the afternoon uh, prior. So we see that shift mainly happen because we don't have any clouds out there. Cl uh, clouds really help keep things very uniform out there. They help keep warmth in. They help prevent the cold uh, from escaping or from really coming through in the overnight hours. Hours. And so as we start off now your Thursday morning, we see some cool temperatures out there. Ramona at 36 degrees, Poway at 43, Del Mar at 50 degrees. But these temperatures, although much colder than yesterday, are going to translate to much warmer highs by the afternoon. 16 degrees colder right now in Ramona as we speak than 24 hours ago. 11 degrees colder in Oceanside and in Del Mar. So watch what happens by the time we get to the rest of your day. 2, 3 p.m. We're going to be seeing widespread 70s in the forecast. 60 across your mountaintops, mid 70s for the deserts. Today, the Santa Ana wind event that began last night is starting to die down, so we're seeing those winds come to a halt. However, breezy still over your mountaintops and your inland valleys. These are the two spots where wind is still very significant to start off the morning. The reason why, of course, we talk so much about those Santa Ana winds is because it's not necessarily a good thing to channel a ton of dry, warm air towards Southern California. We know what our trouble looks like as far as fire danger goes, so it's something we consistently keep an eye on. However, right now it looks like the more significant wind event is going to take place late Friday into early Saturday. Today we've been okay so far and we're going to see those winds die down through the rest of it. San Diego today again, a lot of sunshine in the mix, mid 70 degree temperatures, cooling down to the 60s by the time we get to about 5 and 6 p.m. Let's talk about traffic. Just a couple things to mention. I want to take you off to 
uh, this crash that looks like it was just cleared. Number one lane was blocked on the 94 at the westbound uh, exit. That was exit 10 a Bancroft Drive. They've been able to get that tow truck on scene, get the car out of the way. Lanes are all back open. We'll let you know about a couple other situations taking place in just a few minutes.